I started watching Drag Race when season 13 was first airing, and having watched all of Drag Race now, I can't help but notice that there is a massive decline in quality when the show was on VH1. Today, I will be talking about that as I've recently come to the conclusion that VH1 kinda messed up Drag Race. Drag Race's first season on VH1, which was season 9, was a success. This is pretty much the only season from this era that everyone generally agrees was good. So, the main thing that was able to get Season 9 to succeed where the other seasons failed was the cast. This is one of the strongest new casts we have ever seen on Drag Race. This season produced three winners, which is an incredible accomplishment. It also got two runners-up and three queens who did great on All-Stars. In this season, the challenge prompts really weren't anything special, but this incredible cast was able to make it work. I don't think we went a single week without either Sasha, Shay, Trinity, or Peppermint giving an incredible performance. This season really was just a masterclass in drag. Another way that this season was really able to rise to the occasion was the greatest twist ever. The lip sync for the crown is probably the twist Drag Race has created with the most impact ever, and unlike in later seasons, this one really delivered. When you have a lip sync between Peppermint and Trinity being the weakest lip sync of the night, you know you have struck gold. The entire season 9 finale back to back was just an incredible experience experience. Season 9 was one of the first seasons I ever watched, and this finale is still probably in my five favorite episodes. Piggybacking on that idea of incredible episodes, we had the Season 9 reunion, which aired a week before the finale. This one is one for the history books. Many people have talked about this, but this is the greatest reunion ever. I don't even know what would have to happen at this point to, for someone to top this. The main thing that made Season 9 great, apart from the cast, was the fact that the last two episodes, three if you factor in category is, were just perfect. This season had a bit of a bumpy ride with Eureka's medevac, but wow did it finish strong. Going right into season 10, we had an equally incredible cast that production really screwed over. On season 10, you had incredible queens like Aquaria, Eureka, Asia, Cracker, Monet, Mo, just to name a few. Sadly though, this is the first season where production really started to drop the ball in terms of challenge quality. While season 9 had a run-of-the-mill good acting challenge in 90210 and a pretty solid musical with the Kardashian theme, Season 10, I don't know what the writers were on, I don't think there was a writer strike during this season, but something was not working. I don't know if this is controversial or not, I don't think Bossy Rossi is a particularly good challenge concept. Then you move on to Breast World, um, even the funny parts weren't that good. I guess on Season 9, the writers delivered an inexplicably good challenge with 90210, and then we go right into Breast World, which is awful. Once again, I don't really know what the fan perception of Season 10 was, but I didn't even enjoy the best parts of Breast World. Then we have the Farmer Rusical. This is one of the worst challenges production has ever thought up. I don't remember exactly who said it, but someone said this challenge was like an SNL skit, and yeah, that's pretty spot on. This cast really delivered on every succeeding season that they were on, but for some reason, the writers just did such a bad job that no one could make up for it. Continuing on this thread of terrible challenges, I want to talk about one of the most exploitative challenges the show has ever done. We are at the final five. We have Aquaria, Asia, Eureka, Cameron, and Cracker. Production decides that instead of doing something like a Rumix for Final Five and then going into a Final Four finale, they need to drag out the personal insecurities of their cast. For this challenge, they have to come up with an evil queen worst version of themselves, 
and literally face off against their insecurities. I don't know what was going on in the writer's room this season, but this is really bad. The episode just feels gross to watch. It's like if they did an entire episode of the segment where the queens have to talk to their younger selves. I don't know why they still have that segment, but I especially don't know why they'd want that to be a full challenge. The Rumix is okay, which brings us to the final four where they are doing a lip sync for the crown. I do not want to go too hard on Asia, Eureka, Aquaria, and Cameron. They are all incredibly talented queens, and I'm sure they are very creative but it did not show in this episode. In this season, trying to capture the lightning in a bottle that was lip sync for the crown on season 9, production pretty much forces the queens to go way over the top with these reveals. Aquaria is dressed like a burrito, Asia has an outfit filled with dead butterflies, and Eureka has, like, the most reveals I've ever seen in an outfit. This episode, in my opinion, perfectly captures what went wrong with the VH1 era. The show is desperately trying to cling to the lightning in a bottle from previous seasons at the extreme detriment to what they're actually doing. Season 11 encapsulates this perfectly. This season, instead of trying to reproduce season 9, production tries to mimic some of the old school drama from seasons 2, 3, 4, and 5 to really, really bad effect. Season 11, in my opinion, is production desperately trying to mimic the Jinx vs. Relaskatox feud of Season 5. All throughout the season, we are treated to constant fights between Evie and Vanjie, Evie and Raja, Evie and Silky, and while there isn't a specific click targeting Evie, the show is very much trying to push her as a protagonist, and while Evie was in the right in a fair amount of these situations, she was just being blunt, it very much comes off as production trying to get another jinx. The whole thing, at least to me, just came off as production trying to recreate Jinx's story. This just didn't work out, not because of the queens, but because of how toxic the fanbase was. Nothing on this season that Raja or Silky did was any worse than what Relaskatox did on season 5, yet Raja and Silky got insane hate, while around this time, pretty much everyone in Relaskatox was a fan favorite. This season honestly could have worked if the fanbase was less toxic, but the fanbase's reaction to even mild drama was just so extreme this season was really never gonna work with the edit it got. Another reason that this season wasn't gonna work is the bad eliminations. So many eliminations this season, unlike almost any season we had seen before, were just despised. You had the Raja vs. Scarlet lip sync, where if you look in the comments on any YouTube video involving that lip sync, you will see a huge turnaround once Raja became a fan favorite. Then you have Sugarcane getting cut for really no reason, and you have Nina West getting cut after barely winning a lip sync over Silky. All of this combines to just a generally negative season. We have fan favorites like Scarlet and Nina being sacrificed to save villains like Raja and Silky. All of this combines to just a really negative vibe. While season 11 delivered a very negative season, almost as if there was a dark cloud circling above, Above it, season 12 gave us the opposite with just a generally positive season. Season 12 is the only other season in the VH1 era that really succeeded. The main thing that made this season work is the cast. On season 11, th while the cast was good, they didn't really vibe with each other, it just felt like a lot of people in a drag competition. This season, we get to see a lot more of the interpersonal bonds between these queens, and it makes for a much more entertaining viewing experience. You had the friendship between Gigi and Crystal, Jada and Heidi, Jan and Britta. It was just a very feel-good season, which is exactly what was needed during quarantine. All of this said, I do not attribute this success to VH1. If all of the rumors are to be believed, this season was originally going to have a massive Gigi versus the Queen Who Shall Not Be Named feud. 
If that was the case, a lot of these positive interpersonal relationships we saw would not have been seen. This leads me to believe that if the Queen Who Shall Not Be Named was not disqualified, the season would have gone right down the road of seasons 10 and 11. While this cast was already incredible, they were really able to rise to the occasion of good challenges. Instead of a disaster like Trump the Rusical or the Farmer Rusical, we had Madonna the Rusical. This was an incredible challenge, best Rusical we had seen since Shade, great job on pretty much everyone's part. Having the queens in a debate, as we've seen in the past, can make for a very fun challenge, and while half the cast did kinda mess up, it was still good. Switching the premiere challenge to girl groups really showed that Drag Race was aware of its success, and that it wasn't just stuck in its old ways. The finale is the final strong part about this season. It is yet again proof that this cast was ready to rise to the occasion. Due to the pandemic, there could not be an in-person finale, so instead, Drag Race does an entire finale over Zoom. This greatly benefits the season as we have no lip sync for the crown, and instead, we just get to focus on the incredible artistry of Jada, Crystal, and Gigi. This is all in all just a very strong season, made even better by having the entire focal negative storyline be edited out. Sadly, on season 13, we would see production completely reject their previous successes in lieu of negativity. I don't want to say that VH1 was tr pushing Drag Race to be more like Survivor, but I will say that about a year or two after Survivor became completely reliant on twists and advantages, Drag Race production really started amping things up with the season-long twists, dramatic fake-out eliminations, and that kind of thing. I'm not 100% sure if it's related, but I could honestly see that as a possibility. Season 13 had a horrific start. Instead of a more feel-good premiere where no one goes home like on season 12, Drag Race decides to crush the dreams of half their entire cast on national television, only to immediately bring them back at the end. This was the first ever full episode of Drag Race I had ever watched and was not good. It just made for such negative, sad TV that even when watching it back with the knowledge that none of these queens are going home, it just feels bad. This episode just feels like production exploiting people's emotions for TV drama. If a bad premiere wasn't enough, this is a season where Drag Race really decides to lean into twists. Production is no longer confident in their queens, likely after the disaster of having to re-edit season 12, production was no longer 100% confident in their casts. This resulted in Drag Race becoming incredibly reliant on twists to make drama. In this season, we had the winners and losers twist based off that terrible premiere. Instead of that premiere just being a one-off bad episode, it has repercussions that destroy the entire rest of the season. There are times where I believe this entire season was just RuPaul trying to prove the Pygmalion effect. For those of you who don't know, the Pygmalion effect is a psychological theory that pretty much says people who are told they are good will perform better, while people who are told they are bad will perform worse. This, either through productions doing through the actual judging or through this winners and losers mentality, is exactly what we see. The queens in the loser circle are constantly thrown under the bus, while the queens in the winner circle are constantly favored. That leads me into the favoritism, which is another big flaw this season. Instead of letting the judging play out somewhat fairly like it did on some previous seasons, not always though, production goes absolutely wild. We have Gottmik winning the ball over Utica, Gottmik being saved from the bottom in the disco mentory, Candy being saved after the lip sync with Simone, and Gottmik being saved after her terrible commercial. Production had fully internalized this idea of winners and losers. This resulted in incredibly lopsided judging, with the winner circle being saved many times. All of that said, I can't really blame production for not wanting to watch Gottmik lip sync. Season 14 is the final season in the VH1 era, and while it is on the better side, it is incredibly twist heavy, which is a main flaw we see in the later part of the VH1 era. 
I will preface this season by saying that a fundamental flaw from the very start is VH1's episode order. VH1 told Drag Race, okay, this is how many episodes you get and you have to use them. This means Drag Race production had to scramble to make enough twists to stretch 14 queens over 14 episodes. That is not really a good position to be in, especially with Cornbread's medevac. Drag Race production pretty much refuses to self-reflect, at least at this point, and after seeing the failure that was the season 13 premiere, where we saw all of these people get their dreams crushed, production decides, let's do some fake-out dream crushes. Let's eliminate Orion and Daya, completely crush their dreams, have them pack up all of their stuff and leave then immediately come back to the competition. This didn't have too negative of an effect on the season, but it just started things off on a kinda sour note. The sour note would continue though throughout the season as there are many, many, many non-eliminations. The premiere being non-elimination, I can excuse. Then, due to Cornbread's medevac, we have a top 2 lip sync with no one going home. All of this is fair, as is the double save later in the season. Sadly though, this is where things take a massive turn for the worst. Production is so desperate to make these dramatic TV moments that they kinda go overboard. Snatch Game is so awful that no one goes home and instead the queens have to participate in a lip sync smackdown. Then... Two episodes later, we have Bosco being saved by a magic chocolate bar, and then finally we end out the last competitive episode, which was the Rumix, with Angeria and Willow getting a double save. Any, like, two or three of these twists individually would have been fine. Sadly, we ended up with a very disjointed season where production was just throwing every single twist they had at the wall, but instead of seeing which one stuck and going with those... They just kept every twist. The final main flaw of the VH1 era is the season 14 finale. Drag Race production was incredibly indecisive all season about eliminations, who they wanted to push, all of it. This is on full display in the finale. We have a top 5 because production just could not decide who to get rid of. Then, based off the finale performances... The top two of the season should probably be a combination of Willow and then either Daya or Bosco. Instead, production leaves the choice not really up to the performances of the night or the performances of the season, instead giving pretty much all agency to the fan vote. Drag Race in this era is very reliant on what the fan vote says, it's not a good idea, and it doesn't really deliver fair results because the fan base at the time is always ever so slightly skewed. Ultimately, this entire era is probably something Drag Race wants to leave behind going forward, and we did see a massive redemption of a lot of these flaws in seasons 15 and 16. Season 15, having an elimination every episode, serves as a direct response to season 14, having very few eliminations, while season 16 has just been an all-around good balance of all the good parts of the modern era of Drag Race. It has been a massive redemption, and if this video succeeds, I will definitely be doing a video on that.